Welcome back to another episode of The Conversation. I'm new, I told The Conversation. We're talking to different candidates who are running for office. I'm joined with a very good friend of mine. Uh, we go way back from um, even before uh, Mayor Carpenter, but we had the pleasure of working with him for a couple of years in the Carpenter administration. Uh, family friend, just an all-around good person. Uh, candidate for Mayor Broughton, Freddie Fontaine. Fred, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Nobi. You know, it's a pleasure to be with you. Definitely, you know, I did not know about your your podcast here and I think it's a it's a good thing for Brockton since you're a young guy and I like to see some young people getting involved in the politics of Brockton. Listen, we gotta get the word out and you know, we have a younger audience and I'm gonna call up the younger audience listening right now. We need your support, we need your votes, we need your your enthusiasm um, in this election. So um, I'm gonna call up the I'm calling up the young voters listening right now that you gotta get out to the polls on November seventh. But Fred, let's get right to the issue. You're running. You're running for mayor. Brought in a lot of things going on in the city right now, and you know we're not gonna waste no time. There's a big deficit of fourteen million dollars, um, at least, possibly, maybe oh. even, maybe even more, um, with the school committee. Now, school committee, the mayor, you'd be the chair of the school committee if you're a mayor. Brought in. Um, what if if you're the mayor right now? What are some um, processes to w- that you would do for this will not happen again this this 14 million dollar deficit and where does the accountability lay does the accountability lay on the city council the mayor superintendents city council all school of the committee above. Or all, all of the above them. all of them so let's talk about so what would you do differently and what what would you do to n- have this not happen again well first of all let me tell you that was n- that was not supposed to be happening at all on any serious city or people who's running the system, it shouldn't happen. I think that's been happening for the longest time in Brockton. Guess why? Because a lot of folks who's running the city, not paying attention, a lack of leadership, and basically, if you have a minority who's the majority right now who's not represented, and your school, for instance, Brockton High School is most likely black, Cape Verde and, 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 and Haitian, most likely black, it would never happen before. You remember that it did happen, but not like this. Under you know Dr. Zach, the school of Brockton was one of the best school we had, and now why we are losing so much attention to it is because whoever's in charge now is not doing the right thing. I was surrounded myself with staff members who knows what they are doing. The school committee, which is involved right now, supposed also to be paying attention to this because all of them sign in, and all of them are guilty about it. Starting from the mayor, who is the chair, if I was him, I would resign myself if I was there. Because you know what, if he was me, who was in the place of the mayor now, I would be hang high now. <laughs> they would hang me high. <laughs> because you say, oh, that, that, this, uh, this guy, this Haitian guy, is come over and steal 14 million. The mayor probably did not, the staff did not probably steal 14 million dollars. But what happened is, is a mismanagement, which they cannot even give you an answer right now, what happened to those $14 million? And it could be more. And those folks, for instance, which is uh, sleeping right now, Haitian, Cape Verdean, black, even some white people who are sleeping right now, they're supposed to be waking up because those two years, if this man is still elected, it's going to be a disaster. First of all, we will not be able to to do the right thing because it's going to be a distraction for him. People are going to keep on coming and asking him, Where's those fourteen million dollars? His family gonna be mad at him. He will he will not have any sleep. If I was him, I'm trying to give him a favor by running on this position because <laughs> I'm helping him out seriously. Because if I was him, I would resign and just move on and let somebody else take this and start over again by by really do the right thing for the city. The city need a break. Fred, l- let's talk about a couple of things that are are, are going on right now. But I, I I just want you for people to understand. Um, you're a business person. You've been um, doing businesses around the city for, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 27, decades. 27 years, decade now. You know. more, more, more than a decade. Um, how is your business experience going to help you to be the top person in the city right now? How is that going to be your advantage? All right. Uh, remember that, was li- like you mentioned it, I've been doing business in Brockton for the, since I moved from Cambridge to Brockton. You could see as a small business, you know, a lot of us, also have business in this town. By my experience, I will make sure I open the door for anyone who want to 
open a business in Brockton. Like right now, it's tough to open a business in Brockton. We had to unlock the city, make things easier for people when they come here to get a license, to get what they need instead of blocking them. Because myself, when I see myself as a business right now, trying to do something for my business right here, there's so much blockage. It's like we feel like, okay, I'll close that thing and go somewhere else. My policy will be an open policy. Anybody who wants a license will come. Instead of blocking you, they will help. They're supposed to help you out to give you the tool necessary to open. Big, small business will be an open door to attract people to come here. And I guarantee you with that, like Bill used to do, you remember when Bill Carpenter you know, was there, I was at the office myself, mm -hmm. we worked together. When people come, we open up the door and help them out, contrary to this administration right now. Because if you call city hall right now, you ask them questions, they keep on bouncing you everywhere. But my policy will be open for young people like you, entrepreneurs, people who want to come to invest and uh, do different things in this city, the downtown needs some more lighting and then to attract people in. Because when you get business, small or big, coming up to your city, it's tax for the city. And that will give us a break. Because we do have a lot of issues in Brockton. And I cannot even start to talk about that because that's so much going on. You probably know about it, Nobi. A lot of those listeners, if they're young, if they get involved in politics, they will know exactly what's going on. I do want to mention, I, I remember one thing you said before. You said you wanted to finish the job that Bill Carpenter started. Um, one of the things that Bill Carpenter um, was talking about is being able to redevelop the Brockton Fairgrounds into something different. The city of Brockton wants to purchase it for $55 million. Do you agree with that? And then if so, what what you think should go into um, that piece of real estate? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, because I think this is the largest piece of property that Brockton have now. If we do not take it, someone else taking it, uh, definitely they could do whatever they want on it. So I would love to have control of it if the price is right, mm. if the, the community is involved and know exactly what they would love to bring into that property. Do you I think that price is too high? Well. <laughs> I am uh, not an, uh, I mean, uh, an appraisal guy, yeah. but, uh, but by what they say, they think it's too high. So I will have to revisit uh, uh, the price again and see exactly if the price is right. And that's one. But, uh, but if it's right and we get the money to do it, if we do have the money, because we, we are on the verge now, by what I heard, on the verge of collapsing, this is on the verge of collapse because so much deficit, so much loss. So we have to balance our budget on a way to make sure if we can afford it. If we could afford it, I think that would be the best thing to do. No, what I cannot, if, 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 it's, it, okay, on a way you could say no. Two, because, uh, which I already answered, if the city is in a deficit, I don't know if we have enough money to do it. Unless right. we get some, unless we get some leeway to, to, to pick that up. That's what some of the city council are saying is that, you know, we're in a situation right now with this debt. I guess this, this deficit really put a, a real curveball mm -hmm. to some plans that are going on right now. Is in, that could be a domino effect. That's correct. On, on, on issue. But, but, but if, if you were able to purchase it, you would, you would want to purchase that. I would love to build that. You know, I would love because you know what? We need some green space in Brockton, especially this, uh, this way. How, I mean, this uh, Westgate, uh, uh, um, the, the fairground is in a good position. People will not have to go be afraid to come down from the highway to come in and spend some time there. We need to bring people from outside of Brockton to come to, to enjoy a little bit of Brockton. A green space will be nice. A nice movie theater will be nice. Also, you know, I would love to see like a biotech company as well coming in to, to at least give some job to the kids around, some nice housing. You know, we, we, we get a lot of good option to, to, to really, but not only my option, this is gonna be the option of the community as well. And, and that, that also, we have, to, we have to keep our mind open because it's not gonna be a city, uh, uh, um, the city to see whatever they want. You folks always listening, you also have to say something about how, what you would love to have as young people. And now uh, you could tell me, okay, Freddie, I would love to see, you know, like, um, when I stand theater there, people come and sing, some green play in space, people could walk. 
you know, something different. You could bring some good idea as well, you know, Nobi. Listen, I mean, I, I, like I said before, as a young person, you know, being able to you know, go to a five-star restaurant is important. You mm-hmm. know, being able to go to a restaurant and not being able to go outside the city to a brain tree or boss and to a beautiful five-star restaurant. Mm-hmm. You know, Brockton has a, a lot of great places to eat here, but there's not a lot of five-star restaurants where, you know, you could sit and dine and, you know, dining space and, uh, you know, recreational space and things like that. There's not a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, downtown. Um, the downtown area, um, homeless population <sighs> for all cities has increased, but we're talking about Brockton and you're running for mayor of Brockton. Um, what would you do to help curve that? Um, because it seems to be getting worse with the homeless population um, in downtown. And is it hampering businesses to, to come into the city? Well, Nubi, this is an issue for everyone who have a business in Brockton, myself included, because I do, right on Pleasant Street, I do have my business right there. I drive down Pleasant Street to Main Street to Court Street on the north side. We have a lot of issues with this. I heard they might be able to move the shelter somewhere else. That will probably give us a break, but the break, you know, that will affect some of the space, uh, which is not good either. It's not a good solution, but we have no choice. The downtown needs to be clean. We need to at least try, because a lot of those homeless folks who's coming in, they're not from Brockton. So we had to stand up as a mayor or maybe city councilors, all of us together, to say to Mayor Who, who's sending those people to us, we're going to have to stop them to send those people toward Brockton, because that's one. And also, we have to, there's a lot of... Um, program they keep on sending to Brockton and uh, substance, substance abuse. We're going to have to stop getting those uh, programs here in Brockton because that attract as well people to come to get the service here. So we have to stop those programs as well. And um, there's a large other population like come from on, our, on the Biden program, the Chili's program, which is also affecting this city. So also we had to go over the, the, the government right here, which is uh, Mora Haley. Uh, to tell her, listen, you know, we cannot afford to have those people on the street because especially now it's going to be cold, so where are we going to put them? So they had, before they, they bring them to Brockton, they had to at least give them the help they need. There's a lot of people on the street, so we cannot afford to take more than what we have. And I don't think the administration right now pay attention to what's going on right now. The attention is not there at all. Freddie, um, we have about two minutes left, two and a half minutes left. What are you hearing um, when you're campaigning from the constituents, the concerns that, that you want mentioned? What are you hearing when you're knocking on doors that, that people are concerned about? Most likely you already say that. You know, the homeless is a problem. The streets are dirty. We don't have no road. The safety issue is a, na- is a problem. The biggest problem is like the school department now has got a deficit of $14 million and maybe more, which your kids now is in the cafeteria right now having no teachers to teach them and the teachers we've just laid off 130 teachers right now while other cities is hiring teachers we are laying off all teachers which could really help our kids here most likely black folks black and brown folks and brockton why what will happen no one will come to invest in brockton you know why when your school system is not working, I will not bring my family here to Brockton. So they get to remember, or black folks, they get to remember to go out and vote. There's early voting, which is started on October 21st through November 3rd at the Charles Center, one Feinberg way. They could go out and vote from 5 to 10, and uh, from 10 to 5. So if they need a ride, they could always call me, 774-259-0096. My webpage is www.fredforbrockton.com. If they want to know more about me, people who are listening who's new like you, I mean who's young, but you know me, but those folks who doesn't know me, again, remember, go to www.fredforbrockton.com. You will know more about me and join the campaign as a young people because I only want to spend two years to help out the city. You know, what do you have to lose? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to lose? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. what do you have to lose? Yeah. Instead of keeping those two years you give into the, 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 the past administration who's not doing anything for you and a fresh face like me who really care for the city, what do you have to lose? Just go out and vote. The last day of voting is November 7 as well. So there you go. You hear it from Fred Fontaine. What do you have to lose? So 
um, election is November 7th, and there's early voting as well. And, um, you know, we're going to post that information. But listen, um, like, like Senator and Senator and President Barack Obama said, uh, don't boo vote. And, and that's what he said. So that's what we got to do. So listen, Fred, I just want to thank you so much for just being an advocate for the minority community, the community in general. And the, the young folks as well. And, and uh, listen, I'm calling it young folks. You got to go out and vote. <laughs> Fred Fontaine, candidate for Mayor Broughton. Fred, wish you the best. Thank you very much.